The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 377 Main Style Appreciation Day As Valet sat silently nursing a bowl of curry, the conversation at the rest of the table fell off as well, leaving Starlight to finish hers in an awkward silence. She flicked her ears. She had only mostly been paying attention to the conversation, but had caught enough mentions of ponies that didn't like her to know she didn't want to know more. Trouble could very well leave her and her friends alone, please and thank you. Eventually, Jardo got up, announcing that he was going to take the night shift piloting so Shinespark could get some rest. Maple gave him a bowl of curry to take the slipstream, then busied herself cleaning in the kitchen as Shine Sparks helped bust dishes and the other ponies went their own ways. Actually, Starlight blinked, the only others present were Valet and Jam Jars, the former still slumped listlessly in a chair. Feeling like she was poking a bomb just because she had nothing better to do, Starlight sighed, squeezed her eyes shut, and decided to follow her fellow filly. Jam Jars swiveled her ears as they climbed to the cabin level, letting Starlight know she knew she was there, but didn't say anything. Eventually, she reached the first door on the right after Shinespark room, decorated with a big Do Not Disturb sign, slid it open, and stepped inside, leaving it wide and inviting. You decided to hang out with me, Jam Jars remarked, the moment Starlight poked her head around the door, already sprawled regally on a bed big enough for a grown couple. How do you like that? I was afraid I'd have to spend this entire ride alone after sticking my neck out for your house in Riverfall. Come on in. Wondering just what she was thinking, Starlight obliged, and Jam Jars telekinetically closed the door behind her. You're not going to do anything weird, right? Starlight asked, tentative. Do you? Nah, just girl talk. Jam Jars shrugged with a flourish, tossing her bushy mane and reminding Starlight it was now a wig. Thanks, Starlight told her, for trying to protect Maple's house. I just wanted to say that. Well, you're welcome, Jam Jars beamed and glanced at the wall-mounted mirror next to her bed. You better mean it. That hurt. A lot. And I did it for my own reasons. But I did it for you too, because we are friends. Thanks, Starlight asked, slightly more uncertain. There had been a conversation about getting to know more ponies her own age somewhere, she recalled, but while Jam Jars could definitely keep up with her, she still wasn't sure this was the best idea. Jam Jars nodded, floating her wig off and taking a comb and several spray bottles to her short hack mane. It looked like she had actually done serious work on it. The hairs were straightened instead of bushy or curly, and the inch and a half the lay had left her with had been further cropped giving the filly an extremely short, polygonal swirl that could hold its shape no matter how much wind or water it was exposed to, yet lie perfectly flat under the wig. Starlight was almost impressed. Being nearly bald had to have been worse than a death sentence for her, yet she still managed to make it look good. So what do you want to talk about? Jam Jars asked, passing the conversation to her with an air that let Starlight know she was doing it purely out of the goodness of her heart. I don't know, Starlight shrugged. You, uh, haven't decorated this room as much as I thought you would. I've been focusing on decorating myself first, Jam Jars explained, snipping at a single too long strand of hair. But it's not like I have a lot to decorate with. All I brought with me on that cart were a few main supplies, and I never had much more than that to begin with. Starlight could relate there. All I have are what fits in my saddlebags. But I do have this. Jam Jar stepped away from the mirror and opened the drawer, pulling out a rolled out paper tube. Help me figure out where it should go. On the wall next to my bed, so it's as close as possible, or further away so I can see it while I'm resting. You still have that? Starlight pointed a hoof, realizing it was the exact same poster Jam Jar had stolen from the spirit of Sosa a long time ago. Two mares lay on their backs on a plush bed, cheeks touching, eyes closed and mouths open, with their limbs spread and tails intertwined as if they were singing together at the sky. Jam Jarth shrugged, rooting for the other doors. I need some tape. And of course I do. It's hot. My family's gone, so I have nothing to hide. Be honest, are you jealous of it? 
Squinting, Starlight sized the poster up again, deciding, against her better judgment, to give jam jars the benefit of the doubt. The mares had different coat colors, one magenta and one lime green, but they were perfectly the same size and made such an effort to marry each other, she was fairly sure they were twins. Each had a two-tone mane with a solid split, the former half black and half white, and the latter half white and half gray. Both of their manes were tied into ribbons, the actual hair, not added accessories, and their horns were light with auras that matched each other in color. They were fairly young, about Shinespark's age, and appeared to be having a good time, but uh, the poster didn't do anything special for her at all. Not really, she replied. Really? Not even a little? Jim Jars looked disappointed. That's too bad, I guess. I guess you really are too young to have your first crush. It's no good for anything other than being a poster anyway. The text says it's several years old. Starlight blinked. It does? Didn't you read? Jam Jar spoke to Hoof at a minuscule line beneath the mirror's names. It's a promotional poster for some concert in a place called Varsidel six years ago. That means those two are probably old and gross now, so imagining is all you can do anyway. Imagining what? Starlight felt her brow for her. But they like you, or are you mere friends? It sounds pointless to me. She gave the pair one more look, then shrugged. Ponies can like each other, but why would you like someone who's never heard of you or doesn't even exist? Jam Jar stuck her tongue out. It's called a crush, and because imagining is fun. Also, because you have nothing better to do when the only ponies you ever see are your mother and your siblings. Someday, you won't be able to stop thinking about ponies that way, and you'll understand then. Let me know when it happens so we can talk about how hot they are together. Starlight glanced again at the poster. They kind of look like siblings to me. It's only gross when it's your own siblings, Jamdroids countered. Otherwise, it's hot. See? They're hot and they look like siblings. Case in point. And besides, I want them for me, not each other. Starlight had never had a sibling, or found another pony attractive, and couldn't argue, but Jam Jar's logic still smelled like a fish. Can we talk about something else? she complained. This is really, really weird. Yeah, Jam Jar's agreed. Like I said, you'll get this when you're older. So, what kind of magic can you do? Magic? Starlight blinked from the sudden topic change, even though she had requested it. She had definitely burned out her horn again, whatever had happened with Hemlock, as it still twinged instead of naturally refilling its reserves like before. Hopefully, it just meant it would slowly recover, and she hadn't lost the tree's blessing forever. Magic that didn't give her a headache was useful to have. She slowly licked her lips, hoping jam jars wouldn't pounce if she said she wasn't omnipotent, and hoping she wouldn't ask her to prove it if she said she was. I can teleport, lift things, make crystals, and feel things for walls, she decided. But I heard my horn going after Hemlock and need to let it recover right now. For more than a day? Jim Charles looked intrigued. You should get that looked at. It's not serious, but that's nice. She glanced regretfully at the wig on her bed. I can still camouflage myself, but it doesn't work on my mane now that it's separated from me. Never worked on clothes either, so I have to be able to take it off if I go stealthy. She shrugged. But that's okay, because being smaller is better for sneaking anyway. I bet Valet doesn't like knowing me she did me a favor. She's not very happy right now. Stinks to be her, Jam Jaws agreed. She is weirdo, don't you think? Always acting random and annoying, and she belches a lot. I figured you'd get along, Starlight meekly offered. Since you both hate having ponies breathing down your necks and telling you what to do. And like mares, apparently. Jam Jaws stuck out her tongue. Ew, no! She's way older than me! Starlight wanted to say something about the ages of the mares in the poster, uh, but decided that it wasn't worth pressing the point. Still, she protested, pointing a huff. Yeah, I know. Jam Jars turned back to her bed, telekinesis still focused idly on her mane. Maybe we could get along, if she didn't get in my way. And she probably thinks I get in hers. You can make an effort to, Starlight suggested. She herself needed to be told to give other ponies a chance, starting with Maple and Riverfall. And now here she was in Jam Jars' room. You think 
I'm not already? Jam Jarrett raised an eyebrow, poking a yellow hoof into Starlight's chest. Don't forget how I feel about you, remember? I'm jealous of you. You have everything I never got to. Strong magic, no family holding you back, the ability to run away. If I was a stupid bully, I'd try to stomp you into the ground because I hate feeling beneath you. Fortunately for both of us, I'm smart enough to know that's not the way, so we can still be friends. But I am making an effort. She paused, seeming to actually consider what Starlight had said. And you're right, I should do more as well. But we'll see. Slightly disconcerted by Jam Jars' frank admissions of how easily she could be a horrible pony, and the implications she actively considered that, Starlight shuddered. Well, she swallowed. You didn't run away, with us, just now, and left your family behind. And I think being invisible is pretty strong. Camouflage, Jam Jarrett corrected. Not as good as invisibility, but yeah, I did. The room was silent for several minutes. Well, if you don't want to talk about my poster, Jam Jarrett announced, you might want to go find your mom or someone else, because this is the first time I've gotten to put it up, and you're going to feel really awkward if I zone out and start daydreaming right next to you. Starlight glanced uncertainly at the door. Does that mean I should leave? Jam Jars utterly ignored her, focusing on the poster. You know what would be hot, she asked, if all my family in Arlbo had to be out for the day and Mom hired them as a sitter. No, just the green one. No, boop, no, the green one. And she would ask if I was hungry, and I'd ask for a grilled cheese sandwich, and she'd go okay and be so happy to make me one. She set up on her hind legs, clutching her forehoofs to her chest. And then she turns the oven on to cook with, and standing in front of it is hot, so she gets sweaty and her mane falls apart. And she's like, oh no, my mane! Can you please fix my lovely ribbon for me so I don't have to stop making you the sandwich? So I'd get to stand beside her and hold her mane together in my telekinesis. But I don't have my bobby pins to stop it from falling apart, but I can go go get them without abandoning her. Starlight backed away in concern from Jam Jars' delirious expression. She was almost positive that Philly was messing with her on purpose, but definitely agreed this wasn't something she wanted to stay for. Instantly, she vacated the room. End of chapter 377.